today we are going to be looking at the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Centre in Toronto, Canada and we'll hone in on the details within this space. This theatre remains the last surviving and functioning double-decker theatre in the world. It was originally named Lowe's Young Street Theatre and was established by Marcus Lowe and designed by architect Thomas W. Lamb. We start our journey from the exterior of the building on Young Street. The original entrance to the theater was actually on Victoria Street, but visitors would still enter through the main street entrance as they do today. Having the entrance on a less popular street minimized building taxes. Originally, it was across from the Eden Store, now known as the Toronto Eden Center, and you can imagine just how popular this theater would have been being located on a street bringing in lots of revenue. From Young Street, it is not possible to tell that this is a double-decker theater, and it is actually L-shaped. The narrow entrance lobby hides the true size of the building. Here is a view from Google Maps that shows the true shape and size of the theater. Mascarons identical to this one line the entrance canopy. Mascarons are a representation of a human or partly human face and are used in architectural ornamentation whose purpose was originally to ward off evil spirits. The mascaron does not appear to be warding off evil spirits and instead looks like a green man with leaves or perhaps feathers framing his face. Carved faces can be seen in Gothic architecture but mascarons are primarily used in beau art style of buildings. Iconic columns are set beside arched windows, with smaller columns creating an illusion of a railing and balcony. Another face can be seen in the middle top of the arch. The man is wearing a lion head and has a theatrical facial expression, as if he were singing or saying lines. The exterior of the building was made with terracotta masonry units. Spectators are greeted by the original wood and stained glass doors. Flowers are depicted on the stained glass as nature is a common theme throughout the building. This can relate to the characteristic of Art Nouveau, that is, using decorative ornamentation based on nature forms such as flowers, vines, shells, bird feathers, and insect wings, and abstract forms that derived from these. The stained glass on the doors and the chandelier that will later be seen in the Winter Garden Theater level are similar to this water lily table lamp designed by Clara Driscoll and a group of women during the development of Art Nouveau. Take a look at this detail that was repeated from around the window arch to the ceiling of the entrance. Visitors enter the gold lobby that is filled with mirrors on both sides. This long rectangular lobby was the main gathering space of the theater. There is imitation gold filigree decorations for molding that are lined with cherubs and natural de details. On one side of the lobby, the different genres and types of art are listed. On the other side, artists and their faces are displayed. This type of symbolism is similar to Islamic and Christian motifs and symbols in their places of worship. Islamic buildings using only vocabulary for ornamentation and Christian buildings using images of figures. The lobby uses a combination of both images and words to tell a story and convey the message, you are in a theater, and to remind visitors of the type of art and talented artists involved in the theater. The lobby itself is similar to the Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles. However, unlike this luxurious hall, the lobby was not built with real gold or marble and uses scagliola instead. And unlike the Hall of Mirrors, the only natural light comes from the front stained glass doors. When looking at the mirror straight on, it appears that the room continues, creating an illusion of space. Perhaps this was the intent of the architect because the lobby is so narrow and dark. When the theater was renovated in 1981, these renovations did not interfere or alter the existing state of the building because it was under the protection of the Ontario Heritage Trust. The bar and ramp do not touch existing walls and all the new renovations can be removed without damaging the building. This is similar to the Opera Garnier Museum in Paris, France, where architect Odile Deck had similar strict rules protecting the existing building. Entering the Elgin Theatre, a space being put to use since 1913, we see this gorgeous circular dome on the ceiling of the room. It originally held a Tiffany chandelier, but that was removed during the renovations in 1930 and became lost and was never returned to the theatre. 
Around the dome are symbols of plastered instruments. Again, another visible reminder of a form of art that is held in the theater. This theater was designed to impress, and it did so. However, like the lobby, the decor is all imitation materials such as plaster gilded details and again with the scaliola, the imitation marble finishes. The walls are covered with Damascus fabrics which originate from Damascus, the capital of Syria. This is a reversible fabric that is made with one warp and weft yarn. It became popular in the Middle Ages and was originally made with silk. Satyr faces made from plaster line the exterior of the opera boxes and upper balcony. Satyrs come from an ancient Greek drama called a satyr play. This is a form of tragic comedy, a performance that combines both tragedy and comedy. A satyr is a nature spirit that has combined physical traits of a man and a horse. The satyr was a character that loved dancing and wine and provided comedic relief, a sort of drunken jester, as you will. So it is no mistake that these plaster satyrs are smiling and laughing and are surrounded by grapes. The main colors in the Elgin Theater are red and gold. Red is the first color that disappears in dark light, but it is also very dramatic. And this is the theater after all. The use of material in the design was conventional at the time, and the colors and look also resemble many other theaters around the world, such as the Fenici Opera House in Italy, Queen's Theatre in London, and the Boston Theatre. Each of these interiors are very opulent and use similar ornamentation, and the ceilings are all focal points featuring round designs. If we take a look at the Greek amphitheater, we can see a similarity between the two plants. The modern day Elgin Theater really has not changed in terms of seating. The amphitheater is semicircled and has a main area or stage for the performers and orchestra. The Elgin Theater is not outdoors, however, the seating plan is somewhat rounded around the main stage and it does go up in height, just like an amphitheater. This layout is beneficial because all audience members get a view of the stage and sound will travel out and up. And live orchestras now perform underneath the stage instead of the middle, however for certain acts the stage can be raised. Time to leave the Elgin Theatre and make our way up to the Winter Garden Theatre, seven stories above. This theatre was opened two months after the Elgin Theatre in 1914 and featured vaudeville performances. However, in 1928 it was closed down due to the popularity of talking pictures. And in 1930, the theater dropped vaudeville acts completely and became an all-movie theater. The Winter Garden Theater was forgotten for 60 years and received the nickname Sleeping Beauty. During the theater's restoration, the volunteers found that water and soap was removing the existing paint, so instead they began to use raw bread dough and this technique allowed them to remove the dirt while leaving the paint intact. This is a technique performed by art restorers, and it reminds me of the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Site, not because it is a technique special to a culture, but because we can see it being passed on and used in different contexts, and this is sort of the idea behind protecting cultural heritage and passing on techniques that may have otherwise been forgotten. Coming back to the actual interior of this theater, there is not really a specific design style but more of an imitation or copy of a theme, and that is a summer rooftop garden. Although there is not a visual historic style to this theater, the idea behind it is similar to one of a gothic church. The architects of a gothic church used light to make visitors believe that they were in the presence of God and used it as a metaphorical power. Motifs and symbols were also used to convey this religious message and belief to people. The Winter Garden, on the other hand, does not use symbols, but rather a very obvious imitation of what they are trying to represent. A rooftop garden can be observed in the details of the ceiling, where real beech tree leaves were weaved into the metal mesh. They are now fake due to fire hazards, but still create that moment of awe. The lamps in the ceiling also create a warm light and are very nostalgic while giving off a fairy feel to the space. The columns of the theater are made to look like tree trunks, the benches look like park benches, and nature scenes are painted on the walls. The flooring and chairs are also green and brown. Both Gothic churches and the Winter Garden Theater were designed to create the feeling of another world, and both were successful in transporting visitors to this otherworldly state of mind. 
Thank you for joining this journey of the Elgin and Winter Garden Theater Center. Let's take our seats. The show is about to begin. Thank you.